Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode two uh, of this conversation series uh, in commemoration of International Coaching Week. Uh, my name is Meenakshi Ayer. Uh, I'm your host and the founder and principal of North Star Solutions and Services. And uh, it's my absolute uh, pleasure to host this conversation series and to meet with our two guests today. Uh, so uh, this is, like I said, this is episode two uh, of a three-part conversation series on the uh, exploring the role and impact of technology uh, in amplifying the power of coaching. And given that this year's uh, ICW theme is Explore Your Potential, I wanted to take, a, uh, take this opportunity to explore the potential of technology vis-a-vis uh, -vis coaching. With everything that's happening around us, things seem to be changing and new stuff seems to be coming out every day. Uh, so wanted to explore um, what does that all mean for the world of coaching? And uh, also wanted to really dig into this intersection of uh, technology and coaching. So the way this conversation series has been designed is that uh, episode one, we met with a couple of coaches to understand what it is like uh, for them on the ground. And then this episode and, and the next episode that's that's gonna be tomorrow, uh, Friday, uh, Friday for us, <laughs> Paul Lewin and Allard, uh, 11 a.m. New York time. Uh, and that we are, we're gonna meet with another set of technologists who are also in the world of uh, coaching. Uh, just wanted to start off with a little bit of introduction. So, um, I am in, I'm an ICF certified coach and I serve as a personal agility, self-leadership and change leadership coach, specifically focusing on mid-career technology leaders, uh, women in tech and cross-cultural leaders, including folks like myself who speak English as an additional language. And I, I work with them to help them in their change, uh, people in change leadership journeys. And I come from the world of technology and then uh, I bring all of my lived experience in that space to what I do as a uh, as a leadership coach now. And uh, today I have with me Paulvin Devasundaram and Allard Van Helbergen, bo both of whom are uh, based at the moment in Sydney, Australia. They, they live there and they are co-founders of a software platform called Medu. And there's a, there's a lot of interesting backstory to the name, to how they got together to do this work. And I would love to love for them to share that with us. But before we do that, just wanted to share a little bit more about Paul Wynn. So the... So I'm seeing that YouTube is on somewhere. <laughs> so I'm gonna get over this technology glitch over here. <laughs> we don't hear anything on our end. Oh, is that's it? fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, so, for, so for us, it just seemed like you stopped in sentence. <laughs> okay, okay, well. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, a little bit about Paul Wynn. So Paul Wynn also comes from the world of technology and has worked with some large technology companies in Australia, including Atlassian and Canva, and, uh, and has had a fantastic experience at, um, in, with receiving coaching through the internal coaching programs of the companies that she's worked in. And that's all of that experience is what she's bringing to her work at Medu, where to me, Paul, when uh, you, are, you are practically the resident subject, subject matter expert in that. So I'm hearing all kinds of audio at my end. So I don't know what's going on. We, we don't hear any background noise. We just hear you at the moment. Okay. So this is weird for me. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to carry on. I'm so sorry about this. So um, I also wanted to then introduce Allard. And Allard also comes from the world of technology, uh, more focused on UI UX and uh, he, here at um, Madhu, he's focused on 
bringing together design, product, and engineering teams to co-create this uh, smart coaching software that, that is Medu. Yeah, so with that, I'd love to uh, invite you, Palvin, to uh, share a little bit more about yourself and, and then uh, Alad, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Meenakshi. Thank you so much for that generous intro. Uh, you covered quite a bit there. So uh, just to add to that, um, yes, so my background is in engineering. I worked at some of Australia's most well-known tech companies, Atlassian and Canva. And it was at Canva that I got introduced to coaching when Canva was going through the hyper growth phase. Um, I went from being an individual contributor engineer to um, a leader leading a group of over 100 people in about two years. So that's a lot of growth for one person to compress into that time. And coaching was super helpful for me in helping me grow, uh, not only helping me grow as a leader, but also navigating mental health challenges that I kind of struggled with over time um, and tried to resolve through many ways. So I understood the power of coaching through that process. Um, I also helped to launch a, a program called Unstoppable Me internally in collaboration with our internal coaching team there. Um, and that was focused on underrepresented engineers and helping them grow into the kind of roles that they wanted, whether that was leadership roles or bigger technical roles. Uh, so that's where I got introduced to the power of coaching. And so I wanted to bring my two worlds of technology and coaching together. And that's what led us to building Madhu. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Polwyn. Um, and I can't let you move on without sharing the story of the name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I come from a southern state in India where we speak Tamil and in Tamil, the word medu um, refers to gentle or slow. It's hard to describe, but in, in, in English, it has many layers of meaning. Um, so it can also mean gentle and intentional. So the idea for the name came from that root word where we want to help people design and live their most intentional and best lives. Uh, so yeah, I'm very proud of the name and I'm glad it resonates and we get asked this question a lot. So I love that, thank you. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I speak Tamil as well. And when I first heard you talk your story about your story in, um, I think there was a podcast, that's where I first heard that. And it, it really resonated with me. And I remember reaching out to you. And that was one of the first things I shared with you as well. So thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing your story. Uh, I, I, next, I would love for Alert to introduce yourself. Well, let, tell us more about what brought you to Medu. Um, yeah, my story uh, personally is I, I'm a designer by, by background, by craft. Um, I, I started with computer science and slowly shifted over to design um, and have a similar to Poe and worked at big corporates and small startups uh, uh, all the same. Um, started at Google and then startups in between and then ended up at Atlassian here in Sydney, which is where I met Poen, uh and uh, and I guess where our relationship started and we slowly started evolving this idea. Um, we'd been looking at, at like at doing startup uh, ideas for a while. And uh, when Paul and went through this uh, hyper growth that she experienced at Canva and her growth as in her career, um, it really triggered like a, a lot of these ideas. Um, and so when we, uh, we took some time off two years ago now already and um, uh, and that idea really resonated with an experience that I had with therapy, um, where we find similar problems of not being able to capture the journey, finding it hard to uh, keep track of uh, all of your goals and actions, and uh, finding it even more difficult to really see progress after a while. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that, and so that really resonated between both of us, and that's uh, one of the reasons that we jumped in on Medu. And uh, so we've been uh, going full on that, uh, like since a year and a half now. Mm. That's that's fantastic. And thank you so much again for sharing your story and for being here today. Uh, I remember having uh, an introductory conversation with both of you a few months ago and uh, really enjoyed learning about 
what you're what you've set out to do with Medu and uh, your vision for coaches and coaches alike. Um, so uh, I do have a few questions that I want to ask you, but then I would like you, I would like for us to start off by you sharing a little bit more about uh, what is the what is that one thing that you noticed that that and that uh, spurred this idea for you for Madhu? Yeah, great place to start, I think. <laughs> um, so when I was going through the coaching, my first coaching journeys, um, I just for some context, I work with a couple of coaches still who who help me. Um, and when we were initially when we were going through that process, I noticed that we were often using. Uh, emails and pen and paper and documents and a random sort of patchwork of things to keep track of the coaching journey. So, and I understand why in a coaching session, we start, we want to start with that blank slate of how are we feeling today? What do you want to discuss today? Totally understand that. But also I found that I was losing the value that I was accruing through the coaching process because there was nowhere to, um, track all of that rich conversation and visualize progress and to uh, be able to tangibly show this is how far we've come. And then often mm. in a coaching journey, you might take a pause for a few months or longer and then come back to it. So I would often feel that I'm a little bit, you know, taking two steps forward, taking a step back, because we've discussed a lot of these things before. And if the, I wish there was a way for them to stick with me better so that I can continue growing and continue taking steps forward as much as possible. So that's where the idea for bringing technology into uh, the process um, came, came mm -hmm. from. And, but we didn't want it to be a tool that is, constantly sending you notifications, you know, I'm just going to remind you that you said you would do this, or uh, here is um, uh, meditation answers all your <laughs> problems, or we didn't want to have um, a solution that was just tackling a part of the problem or doing a little bit, but not enough. And we wanted mm -hmm. to create a solution that really embedded itself in that coaching process, but wasn't intrusive in any way. Um, mm -hmm. So it was, it's flexible, but has enough structure, which is a hard problem. It's quite hard. And coaching itself is sometimes a fuzzy process. So building software for that process is also quite hard. So that was our intention of, we don't wanna build just another app that um, helps you keep a to-do list and track things or gives you some wellness. <laughs> ideas, we really wanted to build um, a tool that understood the coaching process and integrated itself smoothly within that process. Mm, thank you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I think the value that you bring to the table as being the founder for this is your own experience, right? And it's that personal experience of going through coaching, understanding the process from a coach's mindset as well. Uh, and then I know that you talk about uh, Medu being co-created, uh, built equally for the coach and the coachee. Yeah, so um, it's it's real. I, I'm so glad you shared that experience. Uh, so I want to take this to Allard now. From a design standpoint, Allard, uh, what kind of a problem was this for you to solve? Tricky. Um, so the one of the things is that we're uh, we're catering to two different um, user archetypes, um, and we're trying to create a balance of uh, features and things that are useful for and beneficial for both of them, um, and that really helps solve a business case at the same time. Um, and so one of the things that we landed on um, to really help recreate. Uh, the uh, the concept of the conversation and the journey between the coach and the coachee is trying to create a safe space for mm. uh, both the coach and the coachee online, which is something that uh, we haven't seen before and we think is a, a very valuable asset to have in the tool. Absolutely, absolutely. It's like, uh, and I loved what, what uh, Paul Wynn had shared earlier as well, that it's not intrusive. So it's not I mean, we know all, all our devices and apps, <laughs> you know, the the red red circle with a number in it, all those notifications, right? So 
the fact that you've accounted for that is, is fantastic. Um, I want to now get into some of our uh, this questions, starting with what is that one big shift that you're seeing in the world of coaching? Um, yes, I can, <laughs> I can kick us off. One, we're seeing quite a few shifts, I think, and the one big shift, which is related to another topic we're going to discuss later, uh, the one big shift is that we're seeing more people recognize the fact that the solutions to some of the world's biggest problems lies inside of us. It's not about, so for instance, if we take climate change or tackling global poverty, it's not that we don't know the answers to those problems or we don't know the solutions to those problems. We actually know what we need to do. We just don't do them. <laughs> we don't do them fast enough. So the movement that we are observing is um, an understanding of the fact that we need to create some change internally in each and every one of us, in billions of us, to be able to tackle those problems at scale. Um, and that starts at every level. It starts with everyone individually, as well as within organizations, within um, governments, within every, every type of human construct that we've created. So that's um, bringing that back to coaching. What we're observing again is that coaching is a little bit of a secret within organizations. And uh, we were at an uh, ICW event on Wednesday where, where this was echoed in that um, leaders have had coaching for a very long period of time. Uh, coaching has existed within organizations for a very long period of time. Um, and now it's that start, secret is starting to come out, it feels like, and uh, it's starting to trickle down to the broader organizations. And it's not just the uh, restricted to the leadership levels anymore. It's starting to trickle down to organizations. People are starting to understand the value of it. And leaders are recognizing the value in being able to adopt some of those coaching principles themselves and being able to apply them to their leadership. So that's kind of the big trend that we are observing um, and connecting that back, I guess, to a broader sort of global movement of recognizing the need for internal change and growth. Yeah, yeah. Well, well said, uh, Paulman. And, and, you know, it, it resonated with me because that is one of the reasons why I focus on mid-career folks, uh, in, and, and of course, in the technology space. And to, exactly to your point, uh, executive leaders uh, have been receiving company paid coaching as a, as a leadership development uh, strategy or tool for, for years, and it continues to be the case. And what I found in that was that um, uh, how, how much more effective and impactful it would be if you actually prepared everyone through coaching to get to that point instead of waiting to get to that point to sort of now you've earned coaching, right? And, and uh, there's also a lot of support given to uh, fresh graduates, entry level folks, but then the mid, mid career is kind of left to their own devices in a way. And I totally agree with you. I am seeing that big shift in terms of one is like the democratization of coaching and also companies realizing that uh, uh, co coaching can be an effective leadership development strategy. Of course, yes, it's still used as a fix the problem, fix the person kind of thing. And, you know, and I think that's the next iteration of change that can come, come about where we, we look at coaching as a journey from good to great. We are not trying to fix anyone with that, right? Um, so uh, loved hearing your perspective on that, and uh, I'll have ask uh, Alad for his view on this. What is what do you think, Alad? So his observation. Just, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, when you come off mute, it takes a second for you to be oh, audible. Sorry. I don't know if it's just me. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'll yeah. uh, I'll come off mute sooner. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, I completely agree with uh, Paulin's observations. Um, and a build that I can uh, do on top of that is that uh, one of the uh, tailwinds that we're also finding is uh, the, the trailing effects of the pandemic. Um, a lot of people obviously have been uh, shaken in multiple ways uh, during the pandemic and during the years of, uh, of lockdown and are now revisiting what they, they want to do and how they like see themselves uh, fulfilling 
their life's journey. Uh, and as such, like we also see that there is a, a push for coaching coming from that. Um, there is a, a greater ask of people wanting to have more guidance there. Um, and that mm. combines with, I think um, you were mentioning yourself, there's a, a lot more support for um, uh, juniors coming into the workforce. Um, we also noticed that uh, there's an expectation from them almost for that support to be there. Um, and so that's a, uh, we see as well as a pushing effect for uh, coaching to become part and parcel of, of workplace uh, mm. well-being and, and a, a workplace environment. And thank you. Thank you for calling that out. And I think, you know, it also goes back to changing, like, well said, changing expectations. And COVID has kind of opened our eyes to what is it that we can expect from a workplace and that employee-employer relationship has changed so much during the past three, four years. And uh, focus on mental health and well-being, that's another piece that's coming in. So a lot of these interventions are now, I want to say, um, more accepted uh, and, and becoming more, uh, more of a norm. Uh, and it's not... It is still to some extent treated as a reward in a lot of organizations, but I think that also is being normalized. Um, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Um, so I wanted to move on and ask as to, uh, uh, you know, what is a, uh, actually before I ask that question, I would like for you to share a little bit more about Medu and how would you define Medu and who's your, who's your uh, intended, um, customer? Is it the coach or the coachee? How does it work? Yeah, happy to cover that. <laughs> um, I Like uh, we were saying earlier, the Midu as a tool is built equally for the coach and the coachee. So that's something we haven't observed with other tools in the market. So that's a unique um, position for us to take in that um, as a tool, it's meant to be used collaboratively by both the coach and the coachee. We know that a coaching relationship uh, is um, an equal relationship. It's not, it's not about the coach just giving some advice and sending the person on their way. It's about creating agency in the coachee. So um, a tool that is supporting that process needs to be able to create that sense of agency in the coachee as well, or support that sense of agency. So it's we've built it equally for the coach and the coachee. And like um, Alad mentioned earlier, we have a shared journal, which is the core of the product. And that shared journal is the space for uh, both the coach and coachee to document their coaching discussions, insights, um, everything valuable that comes into the coaching discussion can be captured there. Um, it can be a rich feed of your coaching journey. So as you go through it, we often find that our earliest users feel very um, uplifted from going through it because uh, it records that process, their, their you know, journey from where they started to where they're going. Um, but on top of that, uh, we have ways of visualizing um, and tracking goals and actions. So setting goals and setting actions is an important part of the coaching process, but it's not necessarily for everyone. So the tool is flexible in the sense that you don't have to set goals and set actions if you don't want to, if that's not part of your coaching. Um, so, But if you do set them, then there is a way to visualize progress towards those goals and actions, as well as track your mood along the way. So you have... Uh, uh, this visual of how your mood was tracking as you made progress towards the goals and actions. And as the different themes of conversations came up, you can visually see how you were feeling at those times. Um, and finally, we have uh, a couple of things. Uh, we have a mind map that is generated automatically. So it's unique to every coach coachy relationship. And the mind map gives you a bird's eye view of that coaching process. So you get to see the different themes that you've discussed along with your insights and along with your goals and actions that were related to them. So it's an interactive mind map that you can click and see the different connections. Uh, for the coach, so we have some extra features that are just for the coach. Often we know that coaches have a system around their coaching. They have a structure that they've put in place or they have a set of resources that they tend to use frequently. That could be journaling prompts. It could be um, reading material, videos, anything. So we allow them to create that um, system. So almost like a content management system where you can create all of those resources and then um, 
when it's appropriate for each coachee, they can be brought into the coaching, uh, into the shared coaching journal um, as it's appropriate. So you can create a very personalized experience for every coachee. That's kind of the tool in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, um, well, I want to invite uh, Alar to share perspectives from a design standpoint. How was, uh, what's your view on this? Um, uh, could, could you elaborate a bit on the question? Like as a, like, um, what is special about it from a design perspective? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think what's what's special there is that we're uh, really combining, um, I guess, existing separate technologies in a new way into a, a central space, um, trying to bring kind of like the best of breed together of all the different things. Uh, so having a collaborative journal combined with uh, a learning or a content management system aspects of that and trying to bring the best of those things together, uh, together with goal and action track uh, tracking, and then uh, essentially a, a data analytics piece of visualizing those in many different ways um, and having the intent of that be not to be very specific mathematically uh, of like oh this is this is the data but rather to have that be an impetus and um, a point to spark a new conversation between mm. the coach and the coachee uh, the intent behind that really to be to surface uh, um, any kind of insight that might have been missed otherwise because you don't have access to the data in a, a mm. normal uh, fashion um, and now you do and so trying to to bring that to the surface to really uh, be able to dig deeper into um, the journey and the conversation and, and the thoughts that go back and forth um, and and thus to really get the coachy and the coach together uh, to insights deeper insights faster and that's uh, yeah that's our aim there. Mm. I loved how you shared, uh, you talked about the different types of technologies coming together uh, uh, for the, in, in one spot, right? Um, so I wanted to ask you about uh, how do you, so do you, is your intended uh, customer the coach or do you also uh, uh, in, intend to sell to uh, coaches as well? How does this work? Yeah, uh, intended customers are coaches in that coaches uh, will sign up and onboard their clients. So that's what our earliest adopters have done. Having said that, we noticed that there is a lot of pull from coaches as well, where they uh, people are used to having many different options for tooling for everything mm. they do in their lives. So often coaches ask for tools. So there is pull from that direction as well. Um, we are quite early, like we said, we're about a year old. So initially, yeah. yes, our target is coaches. Um, but in the future, it could be that we created the space for coaches to sign up as well um, and use it uh, with their coach. Understood. Understood. Thank you. And uh, I know there are a few people joining again. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, and uh, I'm your host, Meenakshi Ayer, and I'm uh, speaking with the co-founders of a uh, software that's used for coaching called Medu. I'm to, uh, speaking to Paulwin and Allard, who are both based in Sydney, Australia. And uh, we have just started talking about how they started, how they got into this and the why behind the product and who it's meant for. Uh, so I in continuing with the conversation, uh, Paulwin and Allard, uh, I want to ask you, what is that one new shiny object technology that you've used in Madhu? <laughs> uh, I think you know the answer to this one. <laughs> um, I won't... Please don't say chat GPT. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, more specifically, large language learning models, I would say. So okay. um, AI is the quick answer to that. Um, and the way that we've used it and the way that we plan to continue using it is not as a, not in the sense of what is your problem? Here's a coaching plan for you, or <laughs> here mm. is um, an AI coach that can just help you with everything. We don't believe that that's how coaching works. We think that the best kind of coaching is super personal. It's empathetic. It's human. 
And we don't think the AI is quite there yet. <laughs> Maybe one day it will be. So the way we want to use AI and we, that, the way that we've used it is, for example, with that mind map, we use um, AI to generate that mind map uh, to extract out the top themes and insights from the coaching conversations. So the way we really see AI is uh, a way to augment and support that coaching process and amplify it, um, mm. not necessarily to replace the role of a coach and take over and provide AI coaching. That's not how we see um, the value of AI. Um, I think it's gr my kind of super high level view on this is if we can bring technology and humans together and allow them to do what they're best at. Technology is great at taking large amounts of data. In particular, these large language learning models are great at taking large amounts of da data and trying to make sense out of them, uh, crunch the numbers, you know, crunch all this data and uh, summarize them and give insights, pull insights out of it. Whereas humans are really good at that part of empathy and connection and understanding nuance and the subtle mm. um, unspoken things, body language, there's so much more that happens in a coaching session. So we want to bring those two together and say, here's what you can understand from all of the coaching data and bring that together with the human to, like Alad was saying, get to deeper insights faster so people can reach new heights of inner development. Um, I believe that we've explored and only scratched the surface of what we are capable of internally. Mm. Um, so to accelerate that and go deeper within ourselves and grow ourselves to new levels. Thank you. Thank you. And I loved how you shared about uh, what you said about technology and humans, uh, getting them together, and allowing them to do what they are best at, what they each are best at, right? And uh, I also loved your choice of words around insights. It's not, you're not generating the insights, you're just highlighting, you're bringing them to the surface. You're not adding to what's, what is, right? You're just uh, doing the work a little bit faster than, than humans. Um, so in all this, how do you, uh, and this question is for Alad, how do you um, uh, manage it from a, from a security standpoint? Because it's a, at the end of the day, you have many coaches and many coaches in your, in your system, and there is the use of AI as well. Uh, so how is the security uh, piece of it handled? Uh, so uh, all of our data is encrypted both in um, in transit and in rest. Um, and uh, we have policies in place where uh, we are not able to access the data unless we actually need it for support and we get the permission of the user. Uh, so in that sense, we have uh, all the security that is necessary for uh, to scale our, our operation to um, and be secure for uh, coaching coaches, both in small corporations and in large ones. Uh, okay. So and Sorry, oh, and maybe as as the, as our as our CEO and CTO, maybe you are better uh, placed to answer that question uh, and follow <laughs> follow on something. Yes, yeah, I think Alad covered it. For us, it's super important. Security is super important because coaching is all about trust, and uh, trust yes. is the highest priority. So, uh, like Alad was saying, um, we encrypt all our data and we don't access it unless <clears throat> customers have an issue and they give us consent uh, to help them out. Um, and in addition to that, uh, we are, yeah, we want to make sure we follow all the security best practices as well. I have experience in the past working in security um, and I know <laughs> um, how important it is to, uh, it's, yeah, I, I can't even begin to describe how important it is. So um, it's a huge priority for us. And that's why as a, even as a small startup, we've got a comprehensive privacy policy in place. Um, and we share that with all our customers to make sure that they understand um, what, what, how we approach security and privacy. Um, and it will continue to be the number one priority for us going forward as well. Mm. And, uh, and, and you are cloud-based, yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, what are your early adopters? And, and so you are, you, have you, are you past the beta phase? You are in public beta now? Yes, we're in public beta now. Okay. So uh, how can uh, folks sign up? 
Yes. <laughs> Coaches are interested. <laughs> yes. So uh, on our website, which is uh, www.medu, M-E-D-O-O dot life, L-I-F-E, um, coaches can go directly and sign up for, for a trial if they would like to. We also have the option to do a demo. So uh, through our website, you can also book a demo, which we will give you. Um, and you can ask us any questions and then sign up. Uh, so yeah, both options are available. Okay, I just plugged in your website on the chat. So anyone that's interested. Uh, and looks like Srivi has a question. Go ahead, Srivi. Hey, Pauline. I'm um, so excited to uh, hear about what you've got. Um, well, I'm from Melbourne. So yes, all of you are from Sydney. And here I am representing Melbourne. Um, so lovely, Meenakshi. Um, I had a, I mean, last minute uh, look up on your this particular um, opportunity. Um, so pretty much, Paul, in my question is around, are you just limiting? So who's actually your target audience? Are you just looking at coaches? Is that your end customer? Or are you also looking at corporates? And if you are looking at corporates, are you also looking at um, the big fives kind of ones? Or are you looking at SMEs? Or are you looking at me being a founder myself and being a HR professional, are you also looking at tapping into the other realms of human resources? Because future of work is definitely going to be integrated with AI. Um, so I'm curious to see um, and hear more on, on in that light. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the question. Uh, so very broadly speaking, um, the Midu as a tool is for anyone who wants to apply coaching principles to grow people. So it could be, um, and this is reflected in our early adopters as well. So this could be individual coaches um, who have an individual coaching practice. They might be helping um, a small number of clients. Uh, it could be for a coaching consultancy. So a coaching consultancy who have um, many coaches working yeah. together and offering their services to corporates. Uh, so it's there mm -hmm. are customers as well. Okay. Internal okay. coaching teams within companies are also um, uh, a, a customer. So it's not we're, we're okay. not necessarily restricting ourselves to saying individual coaches only at this point. So it's anyone who is applying coaching principles can use the tool in any context. Okay. Um, it can also right. be people leaders, for example, who want to uh, apply coaching principles, um, absolutely suitable for them as well. We have a coaching, uh, a library of coaching resources in the tool. It's a little bit small at the moment, but we're going to expand that out quite a bit very soon. Um, and that will be a place for coaches, people leaders, HR professionals to discover coaching tools that are spread all over <laughs> the internet. Um, yeah, we're bringing them all together under the one roof as well. So anyone from an individual coach to an, a huge organization like EY or Deloitte who have internal coaching um, are all potential customers for us. Okay, lovely. And how is the pricing? That's the most important bit. <laughs> Me being a coach. Pricing is on our website. It's a per seat pricing model. Okay. So it's based on uh, per coachee. Um, and yeah, oh. you can look that up on the website and uh, feel free to reach out directly to us if you've got any questions. Mm -hmm. I sure will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shivi. Yes, Ronald, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ronald from Lima, Peru, South America. Um, well, thank you guys for bringing that power of technology in the coaching field. One question. Um, can you describe uh, what is your, your vision about the future of coaching? How do you imagine that coaching will be in the next 10 years? I can take that. <laughs> um, love that question. Uh, we think that coaching um, is one, it's so broad, which means that it can be applied in so many different contexts. So one vision that we believe will come true in the next 10 years 
uh, is that coaching will become more and more embedded within organizations in many forms. So either as internal coaching uh, to support the organization or with lead and or with leaders taking on uh, and understanding how to apply coaching principles to leadership, we think it will become much more embedded within many organizations. And the other on the other side, what we're observing is, um, as Alad was saying earlier, with the new generation entering the workforce in bigger and bigger numbers, people's expectations of what is work and what is your relationship with work is changing um, quite significantly. Work is no longer about having, you, your identity is no longer tied to having this job title. Um, your identity is separate to your job and you might have multiple different jobs. You might be doing multiple different things. So within that context, um, we are, we're seeing an explosion of individual coaches and coaching practices come up as well, which are very focused on a single niche, for instance. And uh, people saying, well, this is my area and I understand how to coach within this area and I offer my services to people who are interested in uh, developing their skills in that area. So we think that trend will also accelerate into the future um, where we will see more of those niche areas for coaching and um, uh, deploying coaching. Uh, and the and the other one, very, very broadly, we really strongly believe in, um, if you are familiar with it, uh, you might have heard of this, the inner development goals uh, framework and uh, the movement around inner development goals. So we think that will also accelerate where coaching is a huge part of that. Um, and inner development goals is this idea that to make progress towards sustainable development goals, we need to create internal change because the blockers are not that we don't have the solutions. We have the solutions, we're just not doing them. <laughs> um, so that's more broadly another trend that we see will accelerate in the next 10 years as well, where people recognize that change comes from within us. And if we want to tackle these problems, if we want to be able to still continue to be relevant with how fast technology is accelerating, we need to be able to create that inner change as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ronald. And thank you, Colin, for, for your views on that. Uh, you know, I have a question piggybacking off of Ronald's question. What are you two most excited about, uh, about the future of technology uh, driven or technology backed coaching. Hello? Yeah. It's a bit of a, a, la a layer cake. So, actually, the, the bit that I'm really excited about uh, to that drives like our ability to coach is not not necessarily the technology in coaching, but the technology that can teach us about coaching. Um, so, uh, for instance, um, uh, this week, as part of, of ICW, we were at an event here in Sydney, uh, where uh, one of the speakers is a professor who's done work into intuition. Um, and a lot of the technology that's being used um, there has, has been uh, put to work to understand intuition better, be able to measure it better, um, and uh, like understand essentially how our brain works. Um, and I think that what gets me very excited is that understanding and that knowledge about how our brain works will be able to uh, or will allow us to be able to coach better and and teach ourselves better and and have more self-awareness and grow our self-awareness um not not necessarily from um or just purely from the understanding of how we actually work and being able to uh, dissect between um, something that is uh, maybe a, a misleading emotion or a, a misleading instinct versus something that is actually uh, an, in, an intuition that is something that we should follow and understanding all the subtleties of how the brain works and how we can uh, essentially program our own brain with coaching. Um, and I think that part of technology will really help drive coaching to, to elevate it, to also be able to show how effective it is because the basis on which it happens is uh, it becomes more and more scientific as we go along. And I think that's very exciting. Mm. Um, and that's fascinating. And, you know, it kind of, um, I'm reminded of something that the coaches that I spoke to yesterday in episode one of this conversation series, they talked about, and uh, we all, the three of us agreed that the technology that 
uh, the role of technology in coaching is that of being an aid. It's, and we agreed that we didn't think it, it was going to uh, replace coaching the way it's done now. Uh, as much as there is talk about AI coaching and whatnot, but um, the other piece that came out uh, from their experience is that their clients appreciate the use of technology, but more in the admin and the you know the running of the business side of things, and not so much when it comes to the actual coaching engagement piece. And um, and what you share to me is like another. I love your analogy of a layered cake. Because I think what you share, the use of technology in understanding the functioning of the human brain better, a lot, uh, you know, makes us more equipped, both as coaches and as coaches, uh, to to elevate the the amplify the power of coaching really. So um, I, I loved how, so it, you know, I was piecing that together. Thank you, thank you for that. What do you think, Paulin? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Alad. Um, to just uh, that point around um, use of technology in the process of coaching, uh, we believe that most of the tools that exist um, are intrusive, and we want to create a tool mm. that isn't intrusive in that process. Um, and if we can do that, then I think there's a huge potential for technology to really embed itself and support the process of coaching uh, without being intrusive, without taking away from the human connection, because we hear over and over from coaches that what excites people is that one-on-one -on -one connection that you have with another person. Um, and that's where that's where people have the most demand for as well. So going back to Ronald's question of the future in 10 years time, I would love for coaching to be embedded in many facets of our life where we have those rich connections. And um, it's it's not it's not some hierarchical relationship where one person knows better than the other or something. It's truly a partnership where you're both working towards helping helping you grow. Um, so that's that's where I would want the vision in 10 years time to be. And I think that there is a place for technology in that, in supporting and accelerating that process. Absolutely, so beautifully said. And uh, when you talked about, uh, you know, people really uh, craving for that connection, I was reminded of a client that once told me uh, that I don't think I have taken an hour to just talk through things that I want to do, mm. right? This is this busy tech leader uh, who's always go, 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 do, do, do. And he said, I've, I've not taken an hour away from Slack, <laughs> you know? So uh, that's the power. And, and, I, and I strongly believe that coaching is the most um, impactful of human interactions because it really allows you to create that time and space where you, I said this before as well, that you basically are having a conversation with yourself, facilitated and guided by the coach and, and the coach serving as a witness for everything that you are experiencing as you have that conversation. So yeah, I'm with you. I would love for that piece to be preserved because I think that's what makes, that was, that's what brings this sense of sanctity to the coaching process, right? So Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask you was, um, you know, in your line of work uh, at the intersection of coaching and technology, what are uh, like the top one or two technology advancements that you're seeing around you um, that has some potential? that you may or may not be using in Madhu. Yes, yeah, I think uh, the one like we talked about is the lang large language learning models. The, um, their, the model's ability to take in large volumes of unstructured data and make connections and show and be able to surface things out of it is incredible. And it's definitely made huge leaps and bounds in the last few years. Um, and that's something we're already leveraging in Madhu. And the other is a bit more, for me, a little bit more kind of hypothetical. I haven't necessarily seen this. Um, I think 
in terms of when we were talking about security and the cloud and things like that, I really wish there was a way for us to um, be able to provide even better security guarantees for really private data where we're saying wh whether, it, whether it's stored in the cloud or whether it's stored locally, perhaps you get a choice where you can say, I want to be able to store this data locally on where I can control the security myself without compromising on the functionality that you can build around it. So right now it's very tricky to be able to say, okay, you can store the data wherever like makes sense for you. And we still offer this rich functionality over it. That's very tricky. And uh, I would say almost impossible at this point point in time. So if we were able to provide better security guarantees around super private data, I think um, we can we can build a lot more um, a lot more sort of richer applications around things like coaching without having to um, yeah restrict ourselves due to that security aspect so this is a bit of an unstructured unfiltered thought and i i haven't seen any technology that comes at this mm. point in time that makes that possible um yeah i hope that answers your question but yeah yeah absolutely Allah, do you uh, want to add anything yeah yeah I, yeah i have a i have a thought that can uh, build on that i uh, one of the things that i think is um will have a lot of potential and a lot of growth is, uh, is on the, the other side of the spectrum for technology. So on the, the intake parts, the, the collection parts, um, uh, we, you already talk about uh, the models taking a lot of unstructured data. Um, right now that kind of consists of text-based things, um, the internet being largely, uh, like ultimately being text-based uh, at, its, at, its, uh, at its core. Um, and I think that the, the input funnel will start like including video, which already does, but an imagery, but that in practice means like, uh, so if you're having a meeting, you won't need to actually take notes. And this is already happening, right? Like uh, note taking assistance and things. But as that gets better, um, you, you will have a far more conversational kind of interaction with the technology around you and it'll become much more seamless. And um, so you, to use the academic term, it will become ubiquitous, right? And you will start to not notice it. And I think that will become very powerful when you can have a conversation one-to-one -one, uh, with your coach uh, and uh, through subtle cues, uh, commands, or just automatically, the system will know what to pick up on and then uh, use those same language models that we're already using now to crunch that data and uh, give that um, not that feedback, but surface that data that you're talking about, surface that to you real time. And I think that will be as well a, an accelerator to um, just having your coaching conversation, right? Where you don't need to look up information or necessarily um, actively have to, to pull out things from your memory or from uh, like where wherever that data might be, but it will just surface it like as part of the conversation and that that process will become much more fluid and fast. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, as both of you were sharing this, what came up for me is something that uh, um, Ravin J. Sudhasan, who's the author of the book called Work Without Jobs, um, and he's a, he's a future work um, expert and thought leader. Uh, he's a partner with Mercer. And one of the things he talked about is <clears throat> uh, to be successful in an AI driven future, it's about, it's not about what and who the AI is going to replace, but our ability to work alongside the bots. Um, and, and that's exactly what the two of you are alluding to as well, right? The technology is helping us accelerate something or elevate something. It's not taking away the whole thing from us, right? Uh, so um, I just wanted to mention that there, and I'll I'll put the link to his book in in the chat in a minute. Yeah. So um, um, next, I wanted to ask you about uh, what is it that keeps you up at night <laughs> with everything that's happening. 
<laughs> yes, to bring the conversation full circle in the beginning and in, throughout the conversation, we've talked a little bit about um, coaching becoming more embedded within organizations, this idea of inner development and being a global movement towards inner development. But it is also the thing that is keeping us up at night, like many of these things, we think it needs to be happening faster. We sometimes feel surprised by why, given how transformative the power of coaching is, um, why don't more organizations leverage that? Uh, why don't more organizations um, embed internal coaching or work with external coaches or help their leaders understand what coaching is and bring in coaching principles to their leadership? Um, and so that's what's keeping us up at night, that that process should be going we would love to see it go much faster and at the same in the same vein we're seeing uh, a lot of companies recognize that um, well-being is important that people are suffering from mm. the work-related mental health stress and burnout and things like that and the solutions that are offered are often here's you know here's a package um, and you can go and figure it out. It's almost, while they're useful, it's almost pushing the responsibility down to the individual to say, uh, this is to, up to you now. We've done our bit by providing you access and it's up to you now. But we don't believe that that's enough and we, need, we think that there needs to be a lot more. And when you look at technology as well, May, there are so many solutions that offer so many apps, so many things that offer individual level help, like um, meditation or uh, self-help and personal development and things like that. And those are super valuable and it's they, they are great and they are helpful, but we don't think it's enough. We think there needs to be a lot more. Uh, the, there is research, there's quite a lot of research that shows that your manager has a bigger impact on your mental health than almost anything else, apart from your uh, partner at home. <laughs> so um, I think there's a lot more we need to do there. And while there is that movement and this understanding of being able to create inner growth and change and how valuable coaching can be there, we think that it's slower than we'd like it to be. And we'd love mm. to be a catalyst to accelerate that if we can. So well said, um, and especially around mental health and well-being and uh, burnout. And, uh, you know, uh, in March, I co-hosted a conference, a future work conference, and our theme was, our topic was burnout. And uh, it's interesting that, that the World Health Organization talks about burnout as an occupational phenomenon. Right. So it's listed as a disease, but then it's clearly from the work uh, aspect of your life. And, and something you pointed out, uh, Paulwin, there are all these packages, if you will, that are offered by companies, but that's you're only then trying to fix the symptom and not really address the issue, which is more systemic. Right. And, and uh, coaching absolutely can play such a big role, be it organizational change management initiatives, or um, even just working with new managers or first-time people leaders and helping them understand what people leadership is all about. So there's a, there's a lot of scope and, um, and yes, and I share your concern and uh, the sense of hope that it, 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 it is gonna come around. So thank you, thank you for that. Uh, Alert, how about you? I guess the the growing your your inner self to to create a better outer self and um, that gap of it not or it only being focused on business but it actually but there being a difference between it being a health issue and we only kind of like see it in a business context. I'm one of the concerns that I have is how long it will take to really get the the idea of growth and coaching as a way to facilitate that into, for instance, politics and our wider community, where um, I personally haven't seen it as a topic of conversation yet. Um, in business, it's always very clear, well, we want to sell more, we want to grow more, we want to do things faster. Um, and thus coaching comes in as an aspect to uh, facilitate that. Uh, and when we talk about uh, sustainability growth or sustainability goals, those have to be achieved through 
uh, politics and community, but I don't see that same conversation around coaching and how how do we channel that energy there in that domain. Uh, I haven't seen that yet. So that would be another thing where I think there's a lot of work to be done still. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so glad you raised that. Um, and I wanted to share, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, so I agree with you. And I think that um, because most often politicians, uh, they don't they don't have any job interviews, right? They just have elections. <laughs> And we all know how that works. So um, how, what are their qualifications for getting into a role and that too of public service? Uh, so uh, the one person that I do know, actually two people that I've, I have heard them talk about this and do some work are uh, Professor David Clutterbuck, uh, who's the, one of the co-founders of EMCC, a European Medi uh, Mentoring and Coaching Council, and also Professor uh, Peter Hawkins, who's like the um, one of the pioneers in systemic team coaching. Um, and I'm plugging in a link here for everyone to look at this. This is a video of uh, Professor Clutterbuck talking about this and the work that he's done in the public sector. Um, and you can also look up uh, Professor Peter Hawkins uh, and systemic coaching. And there's a you can just look him up, Professor Peter Hawkins. But that's a that's a great point that you make, um, um, Allard, especially in the context of um, you know all, we are we are in a multi crisis situation in the world, and uh, and and all of the answers lie inside of us, and uh, that's what ancient wisdom across all cultures tell us. But I think uh, I also think that coaching is a way for us to rediscover the power of ancient wisdom, uh, really start looking inward as, a, as, a way, as, as we look for solutions to the, to the polycrisis or multi-crisis situation that we're in. Um, really, really appreciate your point of view on that. Um, um, as we begin to wrap up this conversation today, uh, I also invite folks that are on to, if you have questions, we are, uh, feel free to come off mute and ask them or put it in the chat. Uh, and while you do that, I wanted to ask you both, uh, what are your sort of parting words of wisdom for coaches and, and clients alike, since Medu is meant for both? Yes, uh, parting words of wisdom for coaches. I think the one thing that I often hear uh, in terms of um, coaches and how they feel for themselves, they often feel like they have to shoulder a lot of the burden <laughs> on their own, especially if they're an individual coach working in their own practice. And so my one um, thought there would be that uh, they're not alone. They might feel like they are kind of working by themselves or fighting the struggle on their own. They're not alone. Um, there are a huge number of coaches all over the world. There are people like Alad and me who want to support this coaching community. Um, there is this global movement towards understanding inner development and growth. Um, so I would encourage everyone to seek that out and build strong networks. And that's one of the things we want to do and we are doing with Medu is not just creating the tools, but really adding value to the community in multiple ways. So building those strong networks is super important and staying connected, uh, learning from each other and staying strong is super important. So uh, thank you, Meenakshi, for organizing this because this is all part of that. Um, and uh, advice or uh, topics of um, thought bubbles for coaches would be, I think it's awesome that people are seeking out support from coaches. And I'm, I think it's awesome that people see the value of it. So spread the word. If you've had a great coaching experience, share that with as many people as you can. Absolutely. And, uh, oh, I love what you said for coaches, you know. And uh, one of the things I always say is that I'm sold on coaching, not, not just because I'm a trained coach, but because of the phenomenal experience, transformational experience that I've had as a client and going through that coaching process. Right? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Alad? Yeah, I think uh, that was beautiful. I don't know if I can uh, add anything <laughs> much more to that. Uh, word, words of wisdom. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I, I'd maybe add uh, as a coach, um, don't forget to uh, that you are human yourself, uh, and um, and thus you uh, like it's normal to to make mistakes and to grow, uh, and then have some self compassion uh, for yourself, and and don't forget to apply your own coaching principles to yourself, uh, and uh, maybe take a breather once in a while that it doesn't all have to be perfect. Absolutely, you can't pour from an empty cup, so. Thank yeah. you for that much needed reminder. Thank you. Uh, any questions from folks that are uh, still on? Uh, and Allard and Paulwin, if you want to plug in the info about how people can join your community of practice, if there is a way to do that. Yes, the, uh, yeah, we, um, I'm just going to try to find that link quickly. Um, Feel free to reach out to us. Actually, I'll just put our email in there so you can just yes, email us. Yes, absolutely. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. We'll go from there. So I've just put yeah. our email. Um, anyone who is interested uh, in discussing more, in having a demo, joining the community, feel free to reach out through that email and uh, we'll uh, work with you. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So, yeah, thank you so much, Minakshi, and thank you all. I'm so thrilled that I managed to hop myself into this particular conversation. I've already booked myself for a demo for Monday on the 15th. That's your takeaway at 8 a.m. I'm really loving to see how this can uh, make a difference um, uh, and, and see how I can work as such. And I'm a coach, a career coach. Uh, myself and I've also been doing a few things especially I focus with people with disability um, and in the future of work basically that's my area of experience and expertise um, so yeah I'd love to see how I can use Medu in my <laughs> life let's see absolutely that's fantastic thank you and uh, thank you Joe as well uh, and everyone that joined us live, thank you so much for taking the time to do that. Uh, we were talking to the co-founders of Medu, which is an AI-based software meant for both coaches and coaches uh, that, that helps them extend their uh, co-creative space, work asynchronously in that space as well. Uh, we were talking to Paulwin and Allard, uh, who are both based in Sydney, Australia. And I'm your host and uh, founder and principal of Nostra Solutions and Services. I'm physically based in Virginia and the US. And this was uh, episode two of a three-part conversation series where we explored the uh, role and impact of technology in amplifying the power of coaching. Um, and Paulwin and Allard, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your story and sharing all the goodness that you're doing uh, in service of the coaching community worldwide. So, so appreciate your time. Uh, and then thank you so much for being here today. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you uh, for absolutely. having us. <laughs> it was absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. And I also yeah. want to take this opportunity to thank everyone that will watch the recording. Uh, I know we are doing this across time zones. It's eight, 9 p.m. now where I am and it's 11 a.m on Friday for uh, everyone who's in, joining us from Australia. So thank you very much for making this um, such a valuable conversation. And join us back tomorrow, uh, Friday, May 12th at 11 a.m. New York time for the third and final episode in this conversation series. And we'll be meeting with another set of technologists, co-founders of a platform called Yerbo, Y-E-R-B-O, uh, which is all about setting up assessments to draw insights um, uh, at men, specifically meant for coaches and consultants. Uh, so uh, we're gonna take another look at a different type of technology and how that intersects with the world of coaching. So once again, thank you everyone. Take care and be well and have a great uh, weekend coming up. Cheers. Thank you, Meenakshi. Bye.